Thanks so much for staying with us. Decades later, several suspects question still no answers when it comes to who killed Deborah Gunter. That's right. The young woman was found dead in Alabama in the late 70s. Jennifer Lott has been following the case and speaking with family members left behind. She joins us with their continued search for answers. This is the third cold case we've profiled in our series. 20 year old Deborah Gunter was working the overnight shift at a Gaucher convenience store when she was abducted and killed. We're keeping her story alive four decades later with a hope her family will get the much needed answers they deserve. Somebody had to know this place. We would have to know where this place is to drive that that many miles just to dump a body. We was hoping to God they find her alive. She left this world so soon. Oh my Lord, it was awful. We had somebody here who was running up down the coast doing some horrific things to some people. And we had more than one, which is scary. All I remember was a man with a lot of hair and he smelled like cigarettes. It has scared me my entire life. Those crime scenes are bad. And you always have to look at, you know, why so many stab wounds, why the overkill. 44 years later, and the gruesome crime scene photos still haunt investigators like Darren Versaja, who are still trying to figure out what happened to Deborah Gunter. She was only 20 when she was murdered. She grew from humble beginnings in Macon and Warner Robins, Georgia. Her cousin and sister say it was a hard life, but remember her as outgoing, searching for peace and happiness where she could find it. She was a very fun loving person. If you met her, you'd love her. We left to get the skating rink. We skated on Friday and Saturday night. That was our thing. My sister was a mama's girl. She was a wonderful daughter, wife, and sister. Deborah's family says she met the love of her life at 16. She dropped out of high school and married 20-year-old Donald Gunter. The newlyweds moved to Gaucher to be closer to his relatives. Both struggled to find work along the way. That is, until Deborah got a job working the overnight shift at this convenience store. My mom was really nervous because she knew there was nothing around the store, so she wanted my sister to come home and quit the job. Little General Stores were one of the first 24-hour convenience stores on the Gulf Coast. Deborah worked alone from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. I don't know why she was taken from the store. There wasn't but $20 missing out of the register. Police reports showed that on December 5th, 1978, a customer walked into the store around 4.30 a.m. and saw no clerk behind the counter, calling police who found Deborah's car, purse, and sweater still at the store. Investigators learned a customer who knew Deborah was the last one to see her at the store around 3.15 a.m. Four days later and nearly 100 miles away, her body was found in McIntosh, Alabama. She may have been held for a couple of days, which is a whole new ball game. She had to have been somewhere prior to that, possibly alive. The crime scene was horrifying. A 20-year-old woman exposed in the wilderness, her hands tied behind her back with her own blouse, bra, and knee-length stocking, according to the coroner report. Her other stocking stuffed in her mouth, stabbed 32 times in the throat with a small knife with ligature marks on her neck. The posing of her body appeared to resemble a sexual gratification type crime, but the evidence points another direction. She had a tampon in, so they're assuming that, that she wasn't raped because she still had a tampon in. Decades later, as investigators work to solve the cases with advanced DNA technology, Versage says they hit a roadblock. This is in Washington County, Alabama. Washington County doesn't have anything left of this case because we were looking for the clothing. A major frustration now as cases are left sitting, molding and mildewing over the years. Current investigators left without the evidence to solve them. It is frustrating and it, and it, and it is aggravating and even hurt. The search for clues and connections have led investigators to look at other cold cases where young girls were stabbed to death. A car likely an El Camino with a camper shell or station wagon is one common thread investigators are following. In the 1973 disappearance and murder of 13-year-old Rosemary Lewandowski, witnesses told investigators they saw a yellow car in the area. 1975, when 16-year-old Janie Sanders' body was found in Grand Bay, Alabama, a blue El Camino spotted leaving the scene. Investigators believe it could have been the same car, perhaps painted. And in 1978, a similar yellow car spotted in McIntosh, Alabama, where Deborah Gunter was found. Somebody saw a yellow station wagon. 
the yellow station wagon comes up also involved in Lewandowski case but also there's another case out there where a yellow station wagon pulled up and snatched a little girl off a bike in St. Martin. It was after Christmas 1972. Melissa Boykin was just 12 at the time and was riding her new bicycle. But she says someone sinister behind the wheel of a yellow car approached her. And he grabbed my arm. He was going the opposite way. And I wrapped my legs around the bar on the bicycle. So in order for him to get me in the car, he had to take me and bicycle. Not only that, I was kind of beating him in the head a little bit, trying to get away from him. You know, had she given up the bike? He'd have got her. He'd have pulled her in that car, but he couldn't get that bike in the car, so he just threw her on out. All I remember was a man with a lot of hair, and he smelled like cigarettes. I went home and tried to tell my mom about it, and she didn't believe me. My bicycle ended up getting stolen that day. A few months later, Rosemary came up missing. In the decades since, Melissa knows she's lucky, but haunted like the families of the girls who never made it home. Investigators believe the man could still be out there connected to unsolved crimes like the murder of Deborah Gunter. Why? Why would you do that to her? My mama always wanted to know, you know, why and who and she never let me know that she passed away in 2019 and that's one of the things I wanted her to have before she passed away was some peace of, of knowing who or why. And I'm sure there's really, you know, know why but just an evil person. Deborah's only sister Sarah says every birthday, every holiday is a reminder of the heartache. The way we cope with it was we did not talk about it. We were solid sufferers. If you are the person who killed her, you will do the right thing and confess. But if not, you know who you are and I believe you are the solid sufferer now. Those connections to those other cases are where investigators are really focusing their efforts. We'll talk about those and what comes next in the search for answers coming up.